Science TV English, the solution for humanity. He created the universe to him belong the heavens and the earth. The ever living, he is the first. He's the owner of the sea. He sent his messengers to warn his creatures of the grave dangers of worship. There is none greater than the Creator. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah wa ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, to another episode in this series, Live Your Life on Purpose. My dear brothers and sisters, during the last two episodes, we discussed a specific characteristic of reliance, relying exclusively on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, by the help of Allah azza wa jal, we want to cover one of the methods that Muslims have been taught by which they can rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, namely a prayer which teaches us to put our trust in Allah azza wa jal. And as you know, this is Salat al-Istikhara, known as the Istikhara prayer. There are many points related to this prayer, but the easiest and perhaps the best way is just to start by discussing what is istikhara. In the Arabic language, istikhara simply means to seek guidance whenever you want to make a decision concerning something. Islamically, istikhara means to seek guidance as to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows is the best and the most appropriate course of action by means of this prayer, Salat Istikhara, which we go over today. This, my dear brothers and sisters, is a prayer that a Muslim can make and should make whenever they are faced with an important decision and they want to have the peace of mind that their decision was the correct decision. The following hadith, which details Salat istikhara can be found in many books of hadith, with this specific narration that we will give you, found in Bukhari, as it was narrated by Jabir. It starts with him saying, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يُعَلِّمُنَا الْإِسْتِخَارَةَ في الأمور كلها كما يعلمنا السورة في القرآن. He said, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he used to teach us صلاة الاستخارة in all of our affairs, just in the same manner that he used to teach us a chapter from the Quran. So this shows you, my dear brothers and sisters. The importance. And now we continue the hadith where he then said that the Prophet said the following If any of you intends to undertake a matter, then let him pray two raka'a, two units of prayer. And then he said that you make the following dua. Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi'almik. O oh Allah, I seek your guidance and your counsel from your knowledge. Wa astakhiruka bi'qudratik. 
and I seek your strength from your power. And I ask you by your immense favor. For verily, you are able and I am not able. And you are knowing and I am not knowing. And you are the knower of the unseen. Allahumma, in kunta ta'lamu anna hadha al-amr. O Allah, if you know that this decision, and here is where you mention the decision that you have arrived to, which we will talk about in a few minutes, inshallah ta'ala. But you then say, O oh Allah, if you know that this decision of mine, and you mention the decision, and the hadith then continues, خَيْرٌ لِي فِي دِينِي وَمَعَاشِي وَعَاقِبَةِ الْأَمْرِ If you know that this decision is good for me, for my deen, for my life, and for my life to come, for my hereafter, فَقْدُرْهُ لِي وَيَسِّرْهُ لِي ثُمَّ بَارِكْ لِي فِيهِ then decree it for me, facilitate it for me, and bless me with it. And then the hadith continues more. وَإِن كُنْتَ تَعْلَمُ أَنَّ هَذَا الْأَمْرُ شَرٌ لِي فِي دِينِي وَمَعَاشِي وَعَاقِبَةِ الْأَمْرِ فَاصْرِفْهُ عَنِّي وَاصْرِفْنِ عَنْهُ وَاقْدُرْ لِيَ الْخَيْرَ حَيْثُ كَانَ ثُمَّ أَرْضِنِي بِهِ and if you know that this decision is bad for me, bad for those same three things, bad for my deen, bad for my life, and bad for my life to come for my hereafter, then you make the dua, remove it from me, this decision, remove it from me and remove me from it and decree for me what is good wherever it may be and make me satisfied with such. So this is the hadith and this is the dua. It is long but there are many important points related to this dua. So the first point is what is the wisdom of Salat al-Istikhara? The wisdom why this dua is prescribed is that it is a submission to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is a practical demonstration that no one has any power and no strength except from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has availed for them. It means turning to Allah azza wa jal, seeking His help, knocking at the door of the king, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and seeking his assistance, venerating him, praising him, and expressing one's need for him. The second point is, what are the reasons why Salat al-Istikhara is prescribed? Salat al-Istikhara is prescribed in cases where a person does not know what decision to make. In matters where it is known whether a thing is good or bad, such as acts of worship, then there is no room for Salat al-Istikhara. A person cannot say, Ramadan is coming. Let me pray Salat al-Istikhara to see if I should fast during the month of Ramadan. There is no room for this. Salat al-Istikhara is used when we do not know what is the correct decision to make. And we would like to have guidance. So what are the examples, my dear brothers and sisters, of the situations of when we pray Istikhara? The short answer is simple. Any decision wherein you want that peace of mind, you want to have the confidence 
that this is the correct decision. Choosing a spouse, purchasing a home, getting a new job, these are the obvious life-changing decisions. But in fact, any decision where you simply want that peace of mind in the heart, that comfortability that you know this was the correct decision, this is when you pray Salat al-Istikhara. My dear brothers and sisters, we take a short break and come back, inshallah ta'ala, continuing some of the benefits of this most tremendous dua and this most tremendous prayer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran that he created the death and the life, the life, for the purpose, for the purpose of, of testing us. Of testing us. Taqwa and truthfulness, humility and repentance, kindness and gratefulness. Are you prepared for the final exam? Are you ready? Generosity and tenderness give true value to life. To answer the most important exam that you will ever, face. You will ever face. Dr. Jonathan Cazales. Live your life, your life purpose on purpose. Learn to utilize every moment of life to make it meaningful and precious in Live Your Life on Purpose. Next on Peace TV. Peace TV presents What do you have to say about Learning the wise way What would you recommend us to take as career After we pass our school So what exactly we should do What do you have to say about pursuing two fields together Ideas brilliant Strategy sustained The best profession Is a profession of a person Who invites people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Avail the opportunity with Dr. Zakir. Depending upon what is your interest. But the main aim should be to spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To implement the convincing Islamic come educational formula to excel in your career, watch Career Guidance every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers. Before the break, we were discussing this most tremendous dua that the believers are able to use when we are seeking guidance and counsel in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, salat al istikhara. The next point with respect to this dua is a famous misunderstanding that many have with this prayer. They will ask, so once I make the dua, I will have some dream, right? I will have some type of vision showing me what it is I need to do, showing me the correct way. And many people believe this. And the fact that this is even asked shows the deep level of misunderstanding that the believers have regarding this prayer. Many Muslims, they wait to pray Salat al-Istikhara at night time, because they'll tell you, pray it at night and then go to bed, so you can have a vision or a dream telling you what to do. And none of this is from Islam, and it has nothing to do with Salat al-Istikhara. In fact, when you simply look at the words of the hadith, of the dua itself, you could not possibly arrive to the conclusion that you will get a vision showing you what to do. Because the words say what? It says, if this decision is good for my life, my deen, my life, and my hereafter. So the point is, you already have arrived at a decision. And you're simply asking Allah to facilitate it or to remove it. Not, oh Allah, I don't know what to do. Give me a vision. This has nothing to do with the prayer. The next point related to this prayer, Salat al-Istikhara, is the high level of importance that was placed on it. As was mentioned by Jabr, 
radiallahu anhu, the narrator of the hadith, when he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to teach for them to use Salat al-Istikhara in all of their affairs, just in the same way that he would teach a surah from the Qur'an. And reflect upon that. It goes without saying how important the Qur'an was in the life of the companions. And without doubt how important the Qur'an was to the Prophet ﷺ. But here in this hadith, we see that the Prophet ﷺ taught istikhara just as he taught a surah from the Qur'an. So look at the importance, my dear brothers and sisters, in the status that this prayer had for the believers. Again, the reasons and the wisdoms for this prayer are many all with the focus of training the believer to turn over all of their matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to rely completely on Him. For He is all you need. You want peace of mind? Pray Salat al-Istikhara. The next point in relation to the prayer is that we should make a consultation with those who are familiar with our situation before we try to come to our decision. Examples would include consulting a doctor and trying to get second opinions before making a life-changing decision such as having a surgery. Or consulting friends with strong financial background before investing substantial sums of money and consulting authorities within your industry when determining whether or not to accept a certain position. You get the idea, brothers and sisters. If you need to make a tough decision, then consult with the people who have knowledge in this area. That said, does this consultation mean that you are leaving the reliance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Does this mean that you are not putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Absolutely not. Rather, the one who does this is actually obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he says in the Quran, وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فتوكل على الله إن الله يحب المتوكلين he said, and consult them regarding your affairs or in your affairs. Then, after the consultation, once you have taken a decision, then rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For indeed, Allah loves those who rely upon Him. And this goes back to, as was mentioned previously, about tying up your camel with the hadith. When the Prophet ﷺ saw the Bedouin who had just left his camel without tying it up, and then he asked them, aren't you going to tie up your camel? The Bedouin responded what? He said, no, I rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with confidence. To which the Prophet ﷺ said, اعقلها وتوكل Tie up the camel meaning effect the causes, and then rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must effect the causes to have success and to have victory. And once we do so, then we rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as the hadith mentions, tie up your camel and then rely upon Allah. Consult those who have knowledge in the domain in which you need consultation, and then make your decision, and after you have arrived at your decision, rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and perform this prayer, Salat al-Istikhara. And finally, my dear brothers and sisters, just so we are on the same page, we end with a couple of case studies. So case study number one, something many of us have gone through, and many perhaps will. 
purchasing a vehicle. If you want to buy a new car and you are unsure if this is the right vehicle to purchase, you are unsure how it can impact your cash flow, you are unsure about your finances and a variety of other factors. Step one is what? Consult people who are knowledgeable with this problem. Whether it's friends who work with car sales, whether it's technicians who are buddies of yours, who are familiar with different vehicles and the problems that they may or they may not have. Make the consultation. After the consultation, make a decision. After the decision, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray Salatul Istikhara. Make this dua, asking him if this decision to get the car is good for you, for your deen, for your life and for your hereafter, then facilitate it and decree it and bless him with it. But if the car was bad for you, then remove that car and the decision from you and remove you from it and then give you that which is better and make you satisfied with it. Case study number two, a lot more important than the purchase of a materialistic item. One of the most important times to make Salat al-Istikhara, choosing a cellmate in getting married. Of course, that is a joke. Choosing a spouse in getting married. As we know, my dear brothers and sisters, marriage is half of our deen. So yes, this certainly qualifies as a life-changing decision. Once you have found a spouse, consult those whom you trust. Who would this be? Your parents, your family, your close relatives, your friends, religious authorities you trust. After the consultation, make a decision. Arrive to a decision, yes or no. If the decision is yes, or if it is no, either way, perform Salat al-Istikhara, thereby leaving the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And think about this, my dear brothers and sisters. Think about the burden and the anxiety that is taken off of your shoulders and taken away from the heart of the believer. You no longer have to worry if the decision was a good decision or if it was a bad decision. Because think about the wording. And we assume that you arrive to the conclusion of yes, for the sake of this example, that yes, you will get married to this individual. Think about the wording of the dua. Oh Allah, if the decision to get married to this person is good for my deen, for my life and for my life to come, decree it for me, facilitate it, make it easy, and bless me with it. And if this decision is bad for me, for my deen, for my life and for my life to come, then remove it from me, remove me from it, and provide for me that which is good wherever you find it and make me satisfied with this. So think about that. If you made that dua, and then you get married, you have the peace of mind. You have the tranquility in your heart and the feeling that you know that this is the one that is right for you. Without doubt, because of that dua you made. And on the flip side, and this is also where it's beneficial, you have some young man who's looking to get married and he thinks he found the dream woman. She's so beautiful in his mind. And he makes the dua and everything seems to go wrong after the dua. And he does not end up getting married. While he could be sad at what he thought was such a perfect woman, the fact is he made the dua. If this is bad for me, remove it and remove me from it. And indeed it was removed. So either way it works out, my dear brothers and sisters, you have this peace in your heart that you have turned everything over 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And my dear brothers and sisters, you cannot buy that type of peace of mind. You can't purchase it. It comes only from Islam and from this beautiful opportunity that has been given to each and every one of us. Insha'Allah, we all begin to take advantage of this most tremendous prayer, this most tremendous dua, and we start to use it often in our lives. Until next time, fi amanillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He created the universe, to him belong the heavens and the earth, the ever living, he is the first, he's the owner of mercy, he sent his messengers to warn his creatures of the grave dangers of worship. Other than Allah, there is none greater than the Creator, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY. 3008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. A friendly message by Dr. Zakir. Win over your enemy. In this age of hatred and animosity, our all-loving creator has prescribed the formula for winning over your enemy in the glorious Quran in Surah Fusilat chapter 41 verse number 34 nor can goodness and evil be equal repel evil with what is better you will see that he with whom you had enmity will become your close friend do not defeat your enemies but rather win them over win their hearts and win their minds Peace TV the solution for humanity